The overall goal of our immune system is to protect the healthy cells of our body from invading pathogens such as bacterial cells or viruses. It's to generate and maintain a state of homeostasis. Now, as with many things in life, our immune system is not a perfect system and sometimes it does make mistakes. Sometimes the immune system incorrectly labels an otherwise non-harmful foreign substance that enters our body as being harmful, as pathogenic, and this elicits, it initiates a defensive response called an allergic reaction. And that causing agent that caused that allergic reaction in the first place is known as an allergen. Now, different people are allergic to different things, so allergens differ from one individual to another. People are generally allergic to certain foods or drugs or certain things found in our environment. For example, people can be allergic to pollen found in grass or flowers. They can be allergic to certain foods such as peanuts or certain drugs such as penicillin. Now, let's discuss the mechanism by which an allergic reaction takes place and let's focus on some of the or one of the most common types of allergic reactions known as hay fever. Hay fever is not an actual fever in the sense that it doesn't actually increase the core temperature. Instead, hay fever is simply the name for the allergic reaction that takes place when grass pollen actually enters the air passageways of our lungs. So one very common allergic reaction is hay fever, which is the way our immune system actually responds to grass pollen. When the allergic individual inhales pollen, that pollen, which is essentially a microscopic particle, can begin to release antigens that our body sees as pathogenic. So let's take a look at the following diagram to illustrate how our mechanism is actually carried out. So Let's suppose this is the air passageway, the bronchiole of our lungs. These are the epithelial cells as shown and these are the microscopic pollen particles. Now as the pollen particle moves, it can release these tiny particles, even smaller particles, that our body labels as pathogenic. So these are basically seen as pathogenic antigens by our body. So these tiny antigens can diffuse across the epithelial cells and into the nearby tissue where we have different types of white blood cells. So B lymphocytes produce plasma cells and these plasma cells can recognize these antigens and begin to produce the corresponding antibody that binds to this antigen. And the most common type, the predominant antibody involved in allergic reactions is immunoglobulin E. So immunoglobulin E is produced by the plasma cells. Now what these immunoglobulin E antibodies do is they move on to the cell membrane of special white blood cells found in the nearby tissue known as mast cells. So these mast cells contain these receptors that can bind to the constant region of our antibody as shown in the diagram. Now once the binding takes place, now these antigens that were released by the pollen particles can move on and bind onto the variable portion on our antibody as shown in this diagram in section 5. And once this binding takes place, these mast cells in the cytoplasm contain these granules, these tiny vesicles that carry special chemicals, special immune chemicals such as histamine. And once the antigen binds onto the antibody found on the membrane of these mast cells, these mast cells release these vesicles, these granules, and in turn release the histamine and other immune chemicals. 
Now, what the histamine and these other chemicals do is they initiate an inflammation response and that dilates the blood vessels that carry blood to this area, to this infected area. So we say infected because this otherwise non-harmful foreign substance was labeled as pathogenic by our immune system. And so this technically is an infected area to that particular individual because the immune system of that individual treats the pollen antigens as pathogenic. So more blood flows into our infected area as a result of this vasodilation process, the increase in diameter of those blood vessels. That brings more blood as well as more white blood cells. Now, what histamine also does is it increases the permeability of the nearby capillaries to water and that makes those capillaries leaky. And that's exactly why people that experience hay fever have a red nose as well as a leaky nose because the capillaries become more permeable to water and we have more blood flowing to this area and that's exactly why it appears more red than usual because of the effect that histamine has on our body. So once again, tiny pollen, microscopic pollen particles enter the air passageways of our body, our nasal canal, our trachea, the bronchi, and the bronchioles. And they release these tiny allergens we call antigens that flow via these epithelial cells and into our plasma cells. And the plasma cells see these antigens as pathogenic and begin producing the corresponding complex complementary immunoglobulin E, our antibodies. Now these antibodies then bind onto our mast cells, onto these special receptors and now these antigens can go on and bind onto these antibodies at the variable portion and when the binding takes place, these release histamine and other chemicals that basically dilate the blood vessels and that brings more blood to that area causing redness. It also increases the leakiness, the leakiness of our capillaries, which can lead to edema, the process of swelling. It can also create what we call a runny nose. Now, this type of allergic reaction is not that dangerous, but sometimes individuals are extremely allergic to certain types of things such as peanuts or, uh, or penicillin. And that can be very lethal if not treated immediately by a medical professional.